stories to tell about last night. Alrighty. Well, last night we had a few buddies get together. Oh, front bumper. Had a few buddies get together last night. And we thought, hey, let's go drifting around. We haven't all drifted around in a little while. So we went to our normal spot. And my friend Kenoki that I'm buying the SR off of says that it's okay that I drift his car with the SR before I buy it so I can feel how the engine feels. And that was my first time, for one, drifting an S14. And for two, ever drifting anything over 100 horsepower and first time drifting an SR. So it was a whole new experience to me. And it feels great. It is all the power that I needed. It was amazing how I could just put the car where I wanted it to. With all the other cars that I've had, I had to fucking push that thing as hard as I could and do the most minor little adjustments. There's a cop one sec. And I would always have to push the car to its limits to just do these minor little adjustments. But with the SR, everything just came together and did what I wanted it to. It was really weird, but I was pretty excited about that. And uh, right after I finished doing my run, and I let off start rolling up, and I heard a pop from the exhaust, and then the car died. And I was like, ah, what the hell's going on here? When I pulled up, Kenoki said, turn the car back on, let it cool down and everything. And they're like, wait, hold on, hold on. And I popped the hood, and Kenoki walks up to me, and in the most nonchalant, uncaring way, he says, I think he blew it up. So I start panicking, and we get under the hood just to see that, uh, ow. We get under the hood just to see that the coolant overflow started shooting coolant out. So that wasn't really a big deal, but I was panicking. I thought that I blew it up. And when I was talking to him about it, he's like, well, it doesn't matter if you break it, you buy it, don't you? It was a big, big laugh. But other than that, I was sliding the 240 around a little bit. And the way that where we drift is set up, it's a big box, but for some reason, there's like a tiny little road that just kind of goes off and connects back around. So everyone kind of goes and drifts around the giant box and then drifts through that little tiny road and comes back through. So I've never drifted that before. So I decided, man, well, might as well try it now. So the first time that I tried it, I kicked the car out, everything was going well, and I just wheel dropped a little bit, just kind of dropped off into the dirt, got some dirt in the wheel, no big deal. Thought it was pretty cool. But then the second time, I was like, I wanna actually hit this and hit it right. So I went to go hit it again and see if I can get a little bit better. And where that parking lot is, it's right next to the river. So there's a bunch of debris and sticks everywhere and a lot of dust is all thrown around around there. So from the first try hitting it, threw a little bit of dust and debris onto the road a little bit. So the second time when I hit it, I hit it at the same speed, same everything. But as soon as I clutch kicked, the car just broke loose completely, all four wheels, and just slid into the mud and the dirt. I thought I could have broken a wheel, which these wheels aren't mine, ripped a bumper off, could have screwed something up real easy. So we pulled out, checked, the bumper was halfway hanging off, and we're just like, we need to go. We've been here for quite a while. Cops will be here any minute. So we hurry up and dipped out. And so we drive down the road a little bit, and there's like a little cave monument thing we stopped at so everybody can regroup. And we tried to get my bumper back together, and like, okay, well, let's start heading out back to where we were hanging out before at Quick Wash. And uh, a cop pulled up right before we were leaving. And not all of our friends' cars are legal. So we're all kind of panicking about things, and my car's covered in mud. And so we start panicking. We're thinking we're all going to be screwed. Cop comes up and says, can't be here past dark. Got to leave. We're like, okay, on our way. But so we got out of that pretty scot free it was pretty interesting thought i blew up my friend's car which is going to be my engine thought that i completely screwed my car up but it all ended up coming out pretty well all right well i gotta do laundry real quick so i'll be right back all right well i'm back so in this vlog was pretty much just kind of just me talking about 
about some random things. I thought it would be a good day to do a vlog. I have some free time. But one thing I really wanted to talk about is going to the SR. Because it's going to be it's going to be a whole new world for me. Okay, I don't I'm not sure how the SR is going to be in this car because I have been told that drifting the S13 and the 14 are two completely different worlds. So, I don't know how it's going to be in this, but if it's anywhere near what it's like in the S14, or my friend's S14 at that, things are going to get rowdy. When I went out and did my run with the SR car, I came back and they were all giving me high fives and they were super stoked for me. They're like, wow, like that was, you did pretty well in that. I'm like, they were surprised that I was able to hop in and drive the car like I've driven it before when I never have. So I guess that goes to show that learning on low horsepower really does help. I get a lot of people talking to me and they're like, why haven't you turboed the Miata yet? Or what are you doing with the 240? Or you gotta put an LS in it or blah, blah, blah. And I tell people that I don't want power yet. I still don't want power. And they don't understand that. They're like, well, you need horsepower to drift. I tell them, no, you really don't. You need to drift. You need horsepower to drift specific tracks and corners and whatnot. But I'm so happy that I learned on low horsepower first. Because I really feel like I know how to drive the car and not let horsepower hide my mistakes.